Okay, with this one, I like to knock the corners off. And by this, I'm going to take it on the belt, and this is a used 220, and just go at a 45 degree angle or so. Kind of like you're grinding, you can do it this way and watch the top. Uh, for the bottom, for the wheel, I mean, uh, for the curved areas rather, you're going to have to use a wheel. You're obviously not going to be able to do this on the corner, you're just going to dig holes. So, about a 45 degree angle, and we're going to do a little bit, do the other side, try and match them up, and the same thing with this. Take it all the way around, we can do that on the wheel too, just remember no stopping on the wheel. Alright, I'll show you what I mean. That's for later. You want to get it as even as possible off the machine, but if you can't, that's okay because we're going to finish it by hand later. Get as close as you can though. It's starting to look better already. Even this ugly G10 is starting to look nice.
Okay, I got the majority of the high spots knocked out. So now what I'm going to do is blend this by taking it on the slack portion of the belt. So let me tilt you up right up there. And of course you can't see over the GoPro. There we go. Hopefully you can see them all. Just some light rocking. Let us kind of cut down the sides for you, the corners, the sharp edges. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of close in on the center by gently tapering everything down from here and up from here, even the butt. But you don't want to go too much further than this. Uh, we can go a little bit further and then we'll do it by hand afterwards. Okay, I've taken it down to the pins. That looks pretty good. Now we're going to flip over to the other side. Let's about down to the point. We want to even it up with this side. And let these black lines tell you where to go. You see? I'm just cleaning up the pins a little bit. Okay.
it's just a very rough finish but it's getting close uh, now you have a choice you can move on to a slower cutting belt like a 400 grit uh, this was a 220 or we could do it by hand and uh, I'm a believer that you know what you're gonna learn to make knives you should do it by hand of course you want to get it as close as you can uh, by the machine so this side's got to come down a little bit more to match this side but other than that it's fairly even and the little bit of evening we have to do can be done by hand alright so I'm just going to even out that one little edge and off to the hand sanding alright fellas this is what the knife looks like right now as you can see I got it pretty close uh, to being finished there are some facets on there and sharp corners that we don't want you see all these sharp lines but the general shape is pretty even to the other side so if you look at this black line we got a kind of got that box going around there so the middle is higher you see here we got the same box so we know that this is pretty even but we still want to contour it and make it really comfortable so I'm gonna start off at a shaping grit to shape the rest of it. This is 120 grit sandpaper and I'm going to douse it in some Windex as a lubricant to help it cut. And the way I'm going to do this is just hold the paper just like that and go in and knock those corners down. If you have any uneven spots you can focus on those areas. and uh, shape it so it matches. If you're really far off, you can, uh, you can use a file to help bring you back. Keep that sandpaper soaking wet and it'll keep, keep on cutting. Okay, I'm hitting all the angles that I can and I'm allowing my fingers to contour around the edges. That contour is what's going to give you the comfort when you hold the knife. Notice I'm not getting the spine. I don't want to scratch that up with 120 grit paper if I can avoid it. If you do, it's no big deal. We can correct it later. But we're going to try to avoid that. Otherwise, we're going to have to go back and, and fix it. I'm even get on, getting up top at the nose. Just even though we finished it earlier at a 400 grit, I want it to, I want to blend it. Get down there and smooth out all those angles you made. And this of course is just like all the other ones, this is the most critical step. Uh, the shaping step, because it'll dictate what all your other grits, all your other finishes will look like. So you want to do, you want to do well on this step. See if I wipe it off. You see, looking much, much smoother now. And I just want to see that shiny spot in the middle. I just want to make sure I get that out too. We want a nice matte finish. You don't want to do your entire shaping process like this, uh, just for the fact that you'll volcano the pins like I said earlier. You don't want to spend so much time that you just destroy them. Let's see, I'm sanding and tilting, sanding and tilting. Your hands will tell you where to go, so don't worry about that. A common thing with new makers is you get excited when it starts looking like a knife and you get nervous because you don't want to blow it at this point because it's it looks pretty good it's like hey do I go for door number three and lose all the money I just won one of those game shows or do I just take the money and run well I'm telling you go for door number three you'll be happy you did if that comparison makes any sense <laughs> Okay, 
This side's looking pretty good. You see I still have a little bit of a shiny spot, so I'm just going to work that out, and then we'll move up to the next grit. Well, then we'll do the other side. If you have a tiny little shiny spot like what I'm showing you, it's really not the end of the world because when you soak it in WD-40 at the end of this, you're not going to notice it. I just do it because it'll make me crazy. You see? It's not as shiny now. It's got it's definitely scuffed up, so when I hit it with the WD-40, uh, it'll be fine. But that shiny spot is just the, uh, the epoxy top layer of G10. You know that shiny layer here? This G10 looks so nice when you first get it, you see? It's almost like a mirror finish on the black. That's because that's a, the epoxy layer. You almost always sand that off. Alright, we're looking pretty good now. I'm going to call that side done for the 120 grit. Now onto the other side. Try and make it match. And you'll see that sandpaper lasts a while if you keep it wet like this on G10. So I'll do this grit in front of the camera so you can see and I can explain a few things. Uh, but otherwise you're just going to do this repeat the process for a 220 grit and we'll take it to a 400 like I said it's up to you how far you want to take it typically uh, I'll take it up to like an 800 or more even it depends on the finish you're going after but for sake of simplicity uh, we'll keep it at the 400 oh. you see we're starting to get nice and even both sides, if, once I wipe all that crap off, you see, we still got that same black outlines in the same place on both sides. Hmm, some, some animals honking his horn like that. I don't know if the camera picked that up, but somebody just went in front of my house and pinned their horn. Must be all the awesome going on in this shed. <laughs> but alright. I'll take this up to 400 and I'll turn the camera back on and show you what it looks like and then what to do from there. Alright guys, I'm back and we have finished sanding to 400 grit. Uh, just following the same steps as all the other ones and you see we got this kind of dry, haze looking finish. Uh, that's definitely not what we want. The pins look pretty good, everything's nice and flush, everything's even. So we got our nice gentle contour on both sides. Our blade is still wrapped, and I know you're thinking, well, that kind of looks like crap. What's that white crap all over it? And here's the beautiful thing about G10. We grab our old friend, Mr. WD-40. Soak a rag. Nice liberal amount. And like magic, you wipe it down, and it gets rid of that white haze. And it'll stay like that. So, give the whole thing a nice wipe down. You'll see once I dry it off. Let's get all that off of there. We get a fresh paper towel. Ah, because I knock into the tripod. dry paper towel and wiping it off the best I can and you can see it keeps that nice dark color now if it'll really focus in you see the kind of pattern it leaves very cool stuff almost uh, almost like an electronic pattern like a dot matrix type deal where you can see the weave and everything 
And of course at this point you want to inspect it and make sure everything's nice and even, that it's comfortable, you have no hot spots, and I tell you right now this is super comfortable. And all the grips, very nice, even the reverse grip where you're pulling at your cutting toward yourself, that's that's fantastic. Okay, very nice. So now what, right? Just unwrap it, sharpen it, and that's it. Not so fast. There is more work to be done. So now we're going to clean up this spine. Then we'll sharpen it because you want that the last step. And then we're finally finished.